can you tell us a little bit about your seminar today, about the topics that, uh, that your current research is based on? Right. So uh, the seminar today was sort of a walk from sort of a big picture uh, view from uh, on evolutionary processes to industry uh, dynamics and evolution to uh, to, uh, to to work that is uh, narrowly focused on developing principles of organization design uh, such that that we understand better how you can design teams of people uh, so that they in the aggregate uh, produce results that we're interested in. So that is the aggregate behavior of you know particular ways of interacting serve the purposes we as uh, uh, we, we, are, we are interested in that could be increased efficiency in some way, reducing the error they make, reducing the bias and so on and so forth. Can you give us an example of where this would apply in the organizational reality? Sure. Um, there are plenty of examples of that. For example, our work on screening structures uh, immediately applies to, to any kind of uh, decision uh, processes, be that at the board, the exec board, or be that in, in, uh, in, in units that uh, decide whether to take the left or the right turn, so to say, in new product development, or uh, crucially, for example, in in hiring decisions. So here we have uh, we are in the what we call Rambla uh, de Innovación, which is uh, a Spanish term for uh, innovation high street. Uh, how could our innovator teams? Uh, adopt your knowledge and your thinking, how can they apply it to, to what they're doing, which is designing experiments, mm -hmm. uh, building new prototypes for products and services? There are many ways to think about this. Uh, an immediate suggestion would be if you think open innovation and, and uh, crowdsourcing, uh, basically there's a question, how do you best structure the input from the crowd, so to say, from from uh, from your stakeholders, your customers, and so on and so forth. So, uh, do we, in some way, just take the input we can get? Do we put different weights on that input? Do we structure interaction among different stakeholders mm -hmm. along the way? And uh, the work we are doing can tell you um, or give you some pretty strong suggestions of how to structure those inputs over and beyond what we know currently, uh, for example, in the literature on open innovation. Okay, very interesting. So, so that would mean that um, an innovator team could be better advised to uh, whether initially to go to the um, uh, early adopter to, to get the feedback, uh, what kind of questions to ask, what are the right. Uh, at what point other stakeholders like regulators could be consulted, should be consulted? Correct. Uh, okay. You could even go beyond that. You could say uh, the list of questions to ask uh, could actually be developed based on the experience in gaining good answers from those uh, in the same way as those who ask the questions. That's a role. That those who fill that role uh, we could learn who should best match that role. Uh, so that would be going even further down that line and that would involve uh, future work that, that, that involves also artificial intelligence, of course. I have uh, just one personal curiosity uh, 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 that I would want your opinion on. So we, we are dealing with a very complex environment here, right? So when, uh, when an innovator needs to, w creates, has, has an idea, this idea is multifaceted. It, it could be a product with 20 different product features, certain business models, certain price, and all these uh, choices that they make relative to the price, relative to how they sell it in what type of business model, as well as the feature they choose to develop first, they're all interdependent, right? Mm. So there is a very high level of complexity, and what we face uh, in the in the testing is environment is how we can we build experiments yeah, yeah. that allow us to isolate and really test one by one in, with such a complexity. I was wondering whether you can suggest uh, any or give us right, any any, right. any thoughts uh, of yours on that. Bas basically, it's a matter of uh, how much cost are you uh, you know prepared to spend on the testing. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
So conditional on that, you can think creating test environments that systematically will reduce um, type 1, type 2 error. Uh, and thus, uh, in the way you aggregate the information gained from those tests, that in the aggregate you actually get a better estimate than if you, uh, if you basically uh, do not do that. That will, uh, would, of course, involve some kind of, uh, uh, shall we say, experimental design and trials where you basically structure the way you go with these uh, trials conditional on, on uh, the feedback you get along the way. Right. So, uh, so, so the background would be to say, are we prepared to spend this, this money? Because that would increase expenses on, on the testing. Yeah. Or do we believe that this is uh, so vague that we basically buy a lottery ticket and right. ab abstain from that? That's the big decision. Right. But in, in some cases, and perhaps in many cases, uh, think a bit, bit more about how you design the test environment, I think could, uh, could make a lot of sense. Mm -hmm.